Welcome to the Better Manager podcast. My name is Wendy Hansen, and I'm one of the co-founders and COO of Better Manager. What we know is that great managers have to communicate their message in a clear and inspiring way. Today, we're going to be talking to Judy Carter, but let me give you a little background first. LinkedIn just did a workforce report in September 2018 in the San Francisco Bay Area. And they asked the question, what are the top areas that we need skill development in in the Bay Area? Number one, oral communication. Number two, business management. And number three, leadership. All things that we work on at Better Manager. And today we're gonna talk about communication because Judy Carter is an expert. I met Judy through the National Speakers Association. She's coached hundreds of business leaders going through very important events in their company. Today, you're gonna to hear Judy talk about three types of stories, and she's gonna bring it back to how you can use this. She's been interviewed by Oprah Winfrey after writing her first book, Stand Up Comedy, The Book. Judy Carter went from playing as a Vegas headline stand-up comic to being an, an in-demand corporate speaker. And I mean in-demand, she travels all over the place. Speaking to the power of purpose to overcome stress and navigate change, she was featured in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, CNN, and she's frequently on NPR's All Things Considered. And Judy doesn't like to brag, but she did write the Bible. No joke. She's author of the comedy Bible by Simon, Simon & Schuster, as well as The Message of You, which I have right here. So please... Follow along to our, with our interview with Judy Carter, enjoy, and see what you can take away to help your own storytelling in business. Have a wonderful day. So Judy writes for Entrepreneur Magazine. She's written for Inc. And that's part of how we got the idea for why today was going to be so important to talk about stories and the three stories that she tells. So I'm going to let her kind of kick this off and then after each story we'll get in and I love that she has examples of all the CEOs that she's coached over uh, the year. We want to make this like how do you even if they're standing up in front of their team of eight okay. people how do they make it memorable? All right well I'm coaching um, somebody right now who is CEO of an upstart pharma company and right now he's trying to raise uh, venture capital and his um, employees said, when, so he stands in front of people and is called to action, essentially, join us, give us money, right? Invest in us. And his speeches were not working. <laughs> and he's a scientist. He's a, he's a medical background. He's an actual physician. And now he's leading this um, um, new pharma company that just came out of a testing with a sensational drug that's going to help with arthritis um, and rheumatism, mm. I think. Um, anyway, so the problem is what he, he has is a problem that many of you listeners on this webinar have is that you are so knowledgeable about everything in your subject matter and your topic. You know the data. You've got data. You've got a PowerPoint of graphs and charts i mean your logic is fantastic right absolutely but there's one thing missing and that one thing is absolutely crucial is numbers and data and data are important they're important i'm not gonna put them down but without an emotional connection with the audience without a human story they're not going to be at all interested in your data and graphs, right? You're gonna, they're just, they just kind of shut, shut right. down, you know? And, and so, um, you know, matter of fact, I was, I was just at a, a political meeting last night and where um, uh, it was a local thing. It was for our city council and, and they're trying to teach people how to present and they go tell your story because when you tell your story the council members go they look up and they're interested right. in the same thing so what we do is we do what hollywood does and there are three essential stories that everybody needs you need these stories not only when you speak to people you need these stories on your website 
these become a part of who you are. And these three stories, when you network, you just don't tell, well, I do this, I do that, you know, I'm a middle manager at Lockheed and we make planes or whatever it is you do. You just don't tell facts. You can say the same thing in a very compelling story. And a story doesn't, you people think of a story as, oh, let's sit down and listen to grandpa tell a story about, you know, Vietnam and, you know, and it's like, you know, make no plans for the next 45 minutes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stories can be 15 second stories, which we see on commercials to sell products. Now, um, what every single story of these three essential stories I'm going to tell you um, have one thing in common. They all have it, whether you're you're selling aspirin on television or you're selling your service or products or you're selling your idea at a meeting. OK, every story has this a very crucial thing um, um, in common. Let's look at an aspirin commercial. How do they start, Wendy? What is an aspirin commercial? Uh, start? Exactly. Oh they start with a problem. They start with a what I call a mess. Now, in my book, which is, by the way, this is a new book to show you. Here's a new one. And guess what, oh. everybody? Stay to the end of this. I'm going to give everybody a copy of this. I'll give oh. you an email. I'll give you an email to email me, and I'll, uh, and I'll send you all a copy of this. It's, it's, it's a journal to find your story, okay? And I'm gonna just give it to you free. So the word message, the first four letters are what? Mess. Right, so you can't spell this word uh, message without a mess. So every single story starts with a mess. And then the headache ends with what happens. Well, look at all these people who take this drug and guess what's at the end, 15 seconds later, what happens? So let's talk about the three stories that everybody needs. What do you think? What is your customer need? Like the customer My story. Cust okay, so the first story is your customer story. Okay, so I was coaching this guy, uh, again, the farmer company guy who does charts and graphs and science. I go, well, this is a great drug. Rather than telling me all the statistics about uh, the trials of this drug. Um, I want to know um, a customer story. So he goes, mm -hmm. oh, well, this woman basically told it. He told the story and I went, okay, what's her name? What does she look like? What was her problem? Well, she had, you know, arthritis. No, I wanna hear the mess. She, her, 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 gra her granddaughter, uh, her, her, her daughter had a baby and she couldn't lift her granddaughter up. You know, I want to hear the real, I want to be able to picture her mess, your customer's mess. And then something happens, she, where this person took the drug, and then she, here's a letter she wrote us. I'm so happy. I now can, you know, walk with my uh -huh. new grandchild. I, 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 I can pick up, I can part yeah. participate in my children's lives. I have a renewed you know, reason for living. I'm not a burden on my husband. I, you know, and, and, and so that story can be told in the same amount of story that at the time that he was doing data and statistics, but then you can show the, um, you know, a picture of the data or, or, or offer it to them later. Because, and again, in television commercials, the data is, written clinical trials, side effects include. It's just kind of got done really fast because the important part is the journey. So I want you all to think about right now, you need to have, who have you helped? You know, who have you helped? And when you help them, see, this story is not about you. You come into the story later, but this is a story starring your customer. and your client or your customer was lost. They weren't making money. They were really unhealthy. Their relationships were failing. Um, um, the people who worked on their team were um, complaining, you know, all of yeah. a sudden complaining, you know, they were unhappy and they didn't realize they're doing something wrong. Now 
you enter the story. Or you you come in with maybe the idea you're presenting, we initiated this new plan, and now, you know, and now we have lowered the attrition rate, people are happy, you know, the, the um, matter of fact, just last week, you know, someone suggested we all go out for pizza, and nobody before wanted to go out for pizza because we didn't really like each other. So. Right. It's it's right. it's like what did you do? And success is always measured in terms of three things: um, um, relationships, relationships improve, conflict decreases, that kind of thing. Um, health improves, some kind of health. But the main thing is money. Money improves. Let's say you're a coach, you're a leadership coach, and you tell a story about your client who was a micromanager. People complained. What, you know, give me an idea. You came in, you did this coaching, and now, I mean, didn't we do this, Wendy, when, when we were working with you, yeah. where, where you took um, a company and, oh, it was a little company. I think the name was um, Google. Yeah. Little, little. <laughs> yeah. I go, you're not going to mention that? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> you took one of the, uh, as, as my Jewish grandmother would say, big macher at the, yeah. it's a big shot at, at Google and you transform. So how have you transformed somebody from mess success? Now, when you get testimonials for your website, that's what you want. You want to, you know, like last time I did a gig for, um, uh, for I was speaking to a, a, a pharma company and um, the CEO there came out and said, oh God, that was so great. And I go, Oh, can you say that? And I just take out my iPhone and um, I go, what, and just say, what was the trouble that was in the room before I went on? What was going on? And then tell me, how did people react to my speech? So I, I guide them yeah. to, to actually do this journey. So everybody think, mess to success. A story is not this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. A story is, Everything was horrible. It was a mess. And in this specific story, I came in, my idea came in, my team came in, and now describe the success. Very simple. Um, watch TV I, commercials. It, they're all the same. Mess to success journey in 10, 15 seconds. And you can do this very quickly. Uh, you don't have to labor on it, but on your website, I want to see where your customers were at and because of your product or your services. A story no. is not really what happened, but uh, I mean, it can be, but a story has to be, there was trouble, <laughs> you know, Dorothy, Dorothy had a, 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 a tornado, put her someplace. So she had problems. She didn't know how to get home, you know, and, and the story is the journey. So uh, think think in terms of that. So know right. what your credibility stories are. I call them your credibility stories. These are the stories because, you know, it's one thing to say, I'm really great, or my mom thinks I'm great. But it's another thing to really talk about how your products or services has transformed someone else's life. So that's the number one story that you need. Should we move on to number two? Yeah, number two. Okay, number two is the story of your business. Um, this, in, in, have you, you might have noticed that if you look at the history of Apple or you look at the history of Microsoft, where did they start? They all say the same thing. The you garage. Know, a garage. <laughs> now, why do they? <laughs> we all started in a garage. We had no money. We had no office. I mean, look at Microsoft. Isn't that their story? We started in a garage. We didn't even have an office. And now we sell Microsoft Office throughout the world, right? So, so, oh. so and then you can detail that story as much as you want. But, but there's something very compelling about um, how did your company start? And a lot of people, it's counterintuitive. Um, to talk about the mess that you started in. And as I said, my uh, client who um, is a pharma exec, I want you, wanted him to talk about his journey 
to now successfully releasing, ready to successfully release a drug. But I wanted, to, I wanted to hear about when they weren't so successful, because yeah. then that makes your success so much meaningful because there's an arc, there's a journey um, to your company that you were able, I mean, I, I taught my friend this, who's a marketing um, exec, um, and, and, and she is a wonderful entrepreneur, and she ended up with a staff of 45 people in her marketing department. Okay, impressive. But when you, you know that she started as a night clerk at Safeway with no money, and she built herself up into a multi-million dollar business, you look at her differently. Yes. So, you know, if you work for um, a, a large company, this could be um, your mess success story of your department. Like okay. since you took over your department, what was it and what is it now? And you want to remind people of that because that's the way you get promotions. And you want to make the story compelling and visual. And um, um, that's, that's what I do. I love I love writing stories. <laughs> it's hard to write your own story, but I think these two stories you'll be able to find. I think it's great to write them, especially this last one, if you're going the story of your team, the story of your department, um, to get together with other people and, and find what that, that specific story is because you want to get in the mess. And that's where you get a lot of the humor you know, about how bad things were. And, and, and that'll make you laugh. But don't be frightened to just reveal this, the good parts because people right. want to hear that pain when you didn't think it was going to work and it wasn't happening. And then people are going, wow, what happened? What happened? And we weren't acquiring clients and this was happening and that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we wanted, you know, we couldn't afford out to go out to eat and, and we couldn't even afford a microwave <laughs> to eat right. at the office. Clean up our lunch. Yeah. What there were you no eating? Right. Yeah, right. so you want to get to the minutia of it. It's like, what, what were you really, what were you eating? What was going on? What made it so miserable? But you just don't want to say we were poor. You want to go, what are the, what, what are these very specific, you know, um, um, parts of the story that that would illustrate that you just don't want to like bullet point it. you want to really what was going on yeah we have a lot of um, hr people and people in learning and development who are being able to tell a story to say how do i get budget to get more services and that mm -hmm. message success would be a great story there here's where we were this is what it looked like Here's who's gotten impacted and here's where we are now. Well, how we get more resources to help other people would really be like to show the mess to success journey of people who did get resources and what, what kind of effect it had, you yeah. know, on their productivity. And you want to think of success in terms of the listener. So I will reframe, you know, redo a story depending on the listening of the listener. So what does success mean to the listener? Um, success to the listener might be, you know, depending on their problem. So for instance, um, let's say your company is having a really high attrition rate. Well, that's, you might want to not focus on, well, everybody's getting along. It might be everybody's staying. We're keeping our best right. talent, you right. know? And before they were leaving, before. So that that mess to success needs to be determined in terms of the listener. Okay. Right. How you pitch, it's 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 the way to pitch. I I um I use this like to talk about what I do. So I'm on a plane, okay, and I'm a speaker, right? I do keynote speeches for companies. And at the time I was um, talking, to, and right now I'm doing Power of Purpose and actually just launched my first podcast today, actually, on the Power of Purpose. And so I'm helping people find their purpose through finding their stories. So on the plane, um, I got uh, a lot of money, uh, well over six figures, um, by someone saying on a plane, what do you do? 
And the way I answered that question with a specific story, um, uh, she worked for the Army. Um, she immediately booked me. And then I got booked for the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, <laughs> um, Navy SEALs, the commanders. I, I was all of a sudden I was um, with military. Yes, <laughs> with the military. And what I do essentially, um, because this is an important element, is the listener. So I will go, well, what's going on? What, what, what are your challenges? And I asked her what her challenges were. And she said, well, the workplace is really dismal right now. Everybody's overworked because we downsized. So when she says, oh, what do you speak about? I just repeat back, which is the mess. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, in companies, people just, they the workplace, people are going like, oh, it's Monday. I have to go back in there again. And they're not happy at work. And that, and that happy, I'm, that lack of, you know, being so unhappy shows up in the mistakes they make. And then things have to be redone. And then people mm. are even more rich. Now she forgot she said that to me. So she's like, oh, that's exactly what's happening. He does. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but she forgot she told me. So I'm talking to her listening. And I say, well, what I do is I come in and I lighten up the workplace. I bring back a sense of humor. I turn conflict and, into you know camaraderie, and I show people how to use their sense of humor to deal to overcome the stress of the everyday workplace. She goes, "We could use that," right? <laughs> but it was to her listening. But it's listening. We talk about that all the time with our managers. The most important skill, if you're a coach, is to be a listener. To be, if you're a manager, to be a listener. If you're an you HR, have, to be a listener. You have to speak to the to the listening of that person. Yes. Are we ready for the right. third tip or am I talking we to you? We are ready. Yeah, you're <laughs> awesome. The third tip. Okay. The third, story. the third story is a very important story to have and it's your heart story. Um, I want to talk in terms of, again, this uh, physician that I was coaching and his heart story. Okay. And I think from telling you the details of this will help you in finding your own heart story. So again, this guy's talking in, in, um, in science and half the words. I said, is your, do, does your audience understand all these scientific words? Are they doctors? He's another capital ventilators. I said, well, you have to talk in their language. That's number one. So your heart story communicates one thing. And we've all heard this before. It communicates the why of what you do. Mm. So I asked him and, and, what I asked him was, um, what happened when you were a kid? What, what was something that happened when you were in a kid, you know, um, that really had an effect on your life or just what is some frustration or pain? And yeah, yeah. he tells me this story and it was so perfect. I couldn't believe it just came out of him and he hadn't used it. He told me a story of his grandfather and, and he was Indian and, and his grandfather was a physician as well. And he told him this story when he was an eight year old boy. And he told the story of this little village that he lived in. And um, tuberculosis had come to this village. And his, there, was a, there was medication out to prevent this and uh, antibiotic. And, and um, the antibiotic did not get to the village in time. And his grandfather watched his um, half of his village died before his very eyes. He couldn't do anything. His own family died. His brother died. And, and he tells the story of his grandfather weeping, weeping while he told this story. And then, and then, and then you say, and that's why I realized how important it is to get a drug out yeah. to stop suffering. How important that, and, and then I said, say, and because of my grandfather and what I witnessed from him, that's why I am so committed to this company. Now wow. that changes everything. You can yeah. see- yeah. You have people uh, look like this, yeah. right. right. Oh yeah, you know, in the, in the detail of the story we told, I kind of, you know, told in a nutshell, but then he pauses and I, and I say, now pause. Cause I, he was not intuitive about storytelling. And I said, now pause and now look at them. 
And that's why I'm so committed to this company. That's why yeah. I'm so committed to making a difference in other people's lives. And that's why I'm inviting you to join me in making this difference. Right. Hey, we, we all need the to check know, box, right? right? We all need to know our why. And no matter what role you're in, why do you do what you do? And find your why, find your purpose. Well, that I just want to make a big difference. Yeah. And I want to just say, like, I'm going to, like, if everybody emails me free at judycarter.com. Now, Judy Carter, you know how to spell that, J-U-D-Y-C-A-R-T-E-R. -E and the word free, everybody knows how to spell because it's in every other email. But if you go free at Judy Carter and just put your name in the subject, I will, you'll get a copy of this because this is a journal um, that asks you questions that you write in. <laughs> yes, you're getting an empty book. No, it's not exactly an empty book. But you're going to get... Um, the questions to find out what happened to you as a child. And we, how do we find that out? By looking at today and by mm. asking yourself, reviewing the day and saying, what made you angry today? And when I work with people and I do workshops, what I find out is what made them angry is always linked to something happening in childhood. Like even at the dry cleaner, my clothes weren't ready. You told me they'd be ready. Links to when you were seven and, you know, um, your parents separated, but you, you promised to be together and take care of us for the rest of our lives. You know, it, it, it points to a betrayal, a lie. So what this book does is help you examine today to find extraordinary stories um, that bring go back to childhood and then and and how how our mess um, I usually creates our success. So this relationship to mess success I've been studying for a while. <clears throat> I'm a professional speaker and as a child I had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke was working with a coaching and accountant. Uh, she wanted to speak to get more clients. Now she's speaking. We put stories in. She has more clients than she could possibly use. Before yeah. she'd speak and drone on and people go, thank you, bye. But now right. I asked her, are you still speaking? She goes, no, because every time I speak, everybody wants to sign up with me. And I, and I have too many just, clients. What a problem. Yeah, she does because she told a story about how, um, how at eight, she became homeless and she totally forgotten about that. And I go, well, what promise did you make to yourself? You know, she said, I will, you know, I saw it happen to my mother when my father died and I will never let that happen to another woman. I yeah. will never let that happen. And that's why I'm so committed to you having a retirement of prosperity. And it's like, whoa, right. You know, you, you buy that. Her you in that. Yeah, because that comes from her heart. That's her clear why, and it gets you to move and want to do something. Got so it. those are my three stories that you need. I love your three stories. Yes, yeah. everybody yeah. needs these three stories. And kind of put it in your own, wherever you're doing your work, your perspective, with your team, with your company, with your HR group, with your L&D group. Story, and people remember stories. They don't remember facts and figures. They remember the stories and you tell stories that make people feel Judy, which is so awesome. Well, thank you. I, I just, I just want to say story. Um, is important as a leader because it's important for people to know your mess, where yeah. you come from. And that's why, you know, all politicians start off. We had, we were poor, we had no money, you know, I thought they right. only gave me a million dollars. But but we try, you know, it's and and why do they do that? Because it creates empathy for you as a person and as a leader when we know your hardships, you right. know, when we know your loss, your grief, your difficulties, your pain. Yeah. And most leaders feel um very scared to reveal this because they feel it'll make them look weak to reveal their weaknesses. And um, that's totally wrong. Um, it, what it, we know is that leaders like that are authentic, 
Right. They're true. They they don't look like they are so much better than everyone else, and they understand. So, awesome. Thank you. Those three stories, that wisdom. Keep thinking about your mess to success and tell those stories and figure out what your why is. What's important to you in your work? Why do you want something to happen? It just makes going into work every day such an amazing experience rather than Judy's first description of going into work and it's Monday. Let's figure out how it is that we're going to have workplaces that are engaging and there's more happiness at work, more connection among people. But this is a great way to do it. Great. So uh, thank you, yeah. Judy Carter. And email me, then, and I'll give you that. I'll give you this uh, journal just so you can Great. find your hard story free at judycarter.com. Great. And thank you, everybody. If you have any questions, you can send me a note, wendy at bettermanager.us. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, we look forward to being on this leadership management journey for a long time with you. Thank you. Have Bye. a wonderful day.